so hi and hello there welcome to the new video of the course and this would be the last topic of this particular course and the name of the topic is designing of ce amplifier so in this particular uh, topic or in this particular video as such this won't be a continue a continued form of the video i had divided this video into three parts that we are going to see uh, further that's not a big deal but uh, in this particular uh, video or in this particular topic we are going to design one ce amplifier so basically we are going to take the values of resistors and capacitor in such a way that we should get exactly you know amplified form of the input signal okay so this is the basic agenda of this particular topic okay so let's dive into the lecture so as you can see this is how a ce amplifier looks like uh, to the input side of the ce amplifier we uh, connect one weak ac signal so this is our weak ac signal let me write over here so this is our weak ac signal weak ac signal okay and to that we need to connect one uh, capacitor this capacitor will uh, what it will do it will actually you know superimpose this particular ac signal with dc so over here we are getting one dc signal okay and this uh, the task of the capacitor is to uh, superimpose this particular weak ac signal on the dc signal okay and we had used voltage divider bias because it actually you know it provides a faithful amplification or basically the stability factor is uh, quite good for the voltage divider bias okay and then uh, we had connected one rc and re to the collector and emitter terminal of the bjt transistor or sorry bipolar junction transistor respectively okay and uh, uh, we are taking output from the collector side okay and obviously we need to connect one capacitor again the uh, c out or the main task of the capacitor which is present over here is to you know superimpose or uh, is to just get the uh, sorry strong ac signal from the collector side okay so basically it will block the dc and it will only allow the amplified form or the amplified version of the uh, ac signal okay so this was the weak ac signal over here you should get strong ac signal and this is our v out so let me write over here this is our v out from here we are carrying or here from here we are measuring sorry not carrying from here we are measuring strong ac signal so this is our v out okay and this is the emit resistance re and to that i mean in parallel to that we had connected one capacitor okay so due to this what happens okay i hope you remember that particular concept okay and so i'm not going to tell over here because we had already seen that particular thing in great depth okay so this is the overview of the entire circuit and obviously this is uh, vcc with the help of uh, dc voltage you are actually able to amplify the vkc signal okay so this is the overall circuit but uh, the main agenda in this video is to find out the values for this for all of these parameters okay for all these uh, parameters we need to find out the value sorry we need to find out the values for all these parameters so this is the basic agenda okay and yeah this is how uh, the ac modeling of bjt looks like okay again we had uh, deal with this particular thing in great depth so again no need to you know and uh, explain all of these things over here just uh, remember that the value of hie it is 2.7 k uh, ohms because again we had seen it i think uh, when we were dealing with some t model of bjt okay at that particular time we had seen uh, that why exactly the uh, uh, input impedance of bjt it is 2.7 kilo ohms okay internal input impedance to be precise it is why exactly it is 2.7 kilo ohms okay uh, with the help of data sheet okay if you could remember uh, we just saw this in the data sheet of bc547 okay and this was the circuit which we had uh, uh, concluded in the ec analysis of bjt okay so we are unaware of, with ic we are una unaware of ib although we know hfe hfe is 100 and we are unaware of rt so yeah so we need to find out all these parameters and moving further okay so from here the designing steps will start okay but again see to design certain things we need to assume certain things right so see let's assume let me just draw one box over here let's assume this is our amplifier so this is our amplifier let's assume this is our amplifier okay we are giving certain input to the amplifier and then we are taking certain output from this amplifier okay so just a second let me show it over here so this is the this is your weak ac signal and this is your weak ac signal okay and at the output side we are taking the magnified form of the 
AC signal. So this is the magnified form of the AC signal. Although since we are dealing with BJT, so there should be a 180 degree of phase shift. So this would be something like this. Okay. Okay. So I hope you understood this. You know this particular thing. Okay. All we had already seen it in the previous sessions only. But the thing to notice over here is that see, we are unaware of the input signal. Okay. And we are uh, since we are unaware of the input signal, so we cannot design an amplifier which may which will give this kind of output. So we need to assume certain things, right? So let's assume we want to amplify a weak AC signal of 10 millivolts, okay? Two strong AC signal of one volt. So that means what? This signal, the voltage, overall voltage. I'm talking. See, the overall voltage. That means from here to here. So the overall voltage of this signal, it is. Let's assume it is 10 millivolts, okay? 10. Millivolts. Okay, let's assume the overall voltage of the signal it is 10 millivolts. Okay, and then what we what is our uh, you know uh, desire? Uh, what is uh, what we desire is uh, you know we need to amplify this signal in such a way that at the output side we should get a signal of one volt. So that means what? That means see at the input side we are giving 10 millivolt of signal. So this is a weak AC signal, right? So this is let me write over here. So this is my weak AC signal, weak AC, weak AC signal, okay. And with the help of uh, the amplifier, I am able to amplify the signal to one volt. So this is my strong AC signal. So this is my strong AC signal, okay. So this is the basic agenda, okay. Or uh, this is what we had assumed, okay. See, uh, if uh, if we, if you are designing certain amplifiers maybe uh, for since I'm a biomedical engineer so for biomedical uh, from the biomedical perspective okay let's assume this is your heart okay so the uh, ECG signal ECG signal okay it's something like this ECG signal it is of 1 millivolt so this is of 1 millivolt okay 1 millivolt we are aware of the input signal we are always aware of the input signal whenever we are dealing with amplifiers and now being an engineer it's my duty or it's uh, um, you know according to my desire i will design the circuit in such a way that i should get output according to my desired value so if i want uh, that output should be of one volt so amplifier i will put one amplifier in between such a way that this one millivolt of signal should be getting amplified with uh, sorry should be getting amplified to one volt okay if i want no i don't want one volt if i want 0.5 volt I will design that amplifier in that way okay by changing the values or by altering the values of uh, resistors and capacitors and all if I want that no uh, my amplifier should be of uh, 10 volts okay I mean sorry the output I mean the overall amplitude of the signal should be of 10 volts so I will design that amplifier in that way okay but generally uh, uh, like uh, for gain of 100 to 200 we prefer using BJTs okay but now if you see very clearly 1 millivolts to 10 volts so there is uh, the gain of you know uh, 1000 or 10,000 okay to be precise uh, 10,000 uh, if I'm not mistaken yeah uh, the gain of uh, it is giving the gain of 10,000 right so for that very purpose generally op amps and all they are used okay and instrumentation amplifier and all again uh, if you are not, not aware of all those ICs and all those amplifiers and all need not to worry we are going to see that in the upcoming courses as well so uh, have patience okay so right now since we are dealing with vjt so uh, uh, just a second let me erase this so see over here this is 10 millivolts okay so my input signal this is my v in it is 10 millivolts great and uh, uh, this is my output that is v out v out it is 1 volt okay so my av or the overall voltage gain okay my av or the voltage gain is equivalent to v out by v in v out by v in my v out is 1 volt and my v in is 10 millivolt okay so now if i try to solve it further so this would be uh just a second uh, 1 into 10 into 10 raised to see this 10 raised uh, 10 millivolts would be 10 into 10 raised to minus 3 so over here it will go up and it, this would be 10 raised to 3 okay uh oh sorry and this would be minus one okay because over here this is 10 okay if this 10 goes up so this would be minus one and uh, this millivolts it was 10 raised to minus 3 when it will go up this would be 10 raised to 3 okay so this would be equivalent to 10 raised to 2 which is equivalent to 100 so basically our agenda is that uh, 
uh, we are extracting this 10 millivolt from certain thing okay and we want to amplify this 10 millivolts to 1 volt okay so basically uh, the overall gain the overall gain okay of the amplifier should be 100 okay so basically we need to design an amplifier whose gain should be 100 okay so this is the conclusion of the of this particular uh, discussion okay so let me write over here so what is our agenda so uh, from the above this uh, from the above discussion from the above from the above discussion or explanation it's up to you uh, what is our agenda the agenda is that the amplifier we need to design an amplifier we need to design we need to design an amplifier we need to design an amplifier whose gain or voltage gain to be precise should be should be 100 okay whose gain should be 100 so this is our overall agenda just a second now if you see very clearly we had found out the values of this one so now we are also aware of r1 which pans out to be uh, 51 kilo ohms right 51 kilo ohms okay just a second 51 kilo ohms and this is 10 kilo ohms to be precise okay and this is uh, the value of ib it was 0 0.18 micro amperes right so this was just a second the value of ib it was 0. Point ib it is 0 0.18 micro amperes okay so if you could see very clearly we had found out all the dc parameters okay okay whenever if you could remember whenever we were dealing with dc analysis so what we were doing see the very first thing was the uh, like during dc analysis while solving numericals we were aware of the values of the resistor that means r1 r2 R, rc and re but now since we are designing our own amplifier so from scratch okay so right now the values of resistor were not available to us so we what we did we found out the uh, voltage gain then from that we found out the rc from rc we somehow uh, where we were somehow able to found, found find out the values of ic ie and re but before that we we consider the uh, supply voltage vcc as 12 volts okay as i told you that uh, bjt is uh, not that power efficient device so it's always preferable to take vcc greater than 10 volts so in the in our scenario i consider it as 12 volts if you want you can also go with 15 volts okay and from there we found out the value of vce then ic then re then rc as well then um, uh, like after found after finding out the values of output parameters we move to the input parameters okay like we found out the values of i2 then v2 which is equivalent to vb then we also found out the values of v1 and at the end we found out the value of r1 okay great and um, if you want you can also uh, you know show v1 and v2 over here but uh, it is not that required okay because for transistor uh, these four uh, resistors then the input and output current plays a very significant role and this uh, this one as well that's it okay and the input uh, like the input is signal it also plays a very significant role like its frequency and all okay but uh, yeah for if I talk about DC, only this uh, these four resistors and the values of current that only plays the important role. Okay, so till now we had covered all the DC parameters, DC uh, thing like uh, uh, we had found out the values of uh, DC voltage, DC current, and all. Okay, great. And now we are left with finding out the values of capacitor. If you could see very clearly from here, we are just left with the values of capacitor that is c in then c out and then c e okay capacitor c out it is uh just a second i forgot this but i remember this one this is 13.2 uh, microfarad right 13.2 microfarad and this i guess it was 4 microfarad right 4 microfarad and what was the uh, value of the capacitor c out let me check as i told you i'm not so good in all those remembering the things so, yeah it is 3.183 microfarad 3.183 microfarad so yeah the value of c out is 3.183 
microfarad okay so now i hope that you understood how to calculate the values of all this capacitor okay and the resistors and the obviously the values of current and the supply voltage okay we will uh, keep the frequency as just a second first of all first of all we will keep the frequency as 5 5 kilohertz okay let me well, let me keep the frequency as 5 kilohertz let me check if right so it is not going from this way so let me keep the frequency as 5 kilohertz all right so now that i had kept the frequency as 12 uh, sorry 5 kilohertz and now if you could see very clearly the phase shift is still 180 degree great and this is 800 millivolts up and at below we are getting minus 850 minus 860 something like that yeah so uh, the same thing we were getting over here if you try to add these values 800 and 860 this is this would be 166 so let me write over here although we had seen it over here as well so uh, but still we need to write it again so this is again 1660 uh, millivolts divided by 10 millivolts okay this millivolts and millivolts would be getting cancelled and the gain is 166 when the frequency is 5 kilohertz that means what even though we are increasing the frequency the gain is constant okay even though we are increasing the frequency the gain is constant okay above certain level okay and then graph address select the probe one and select output in the probe one okay and then click okay all right and then graph simulate graph all right so now as you can see we are getting almost a similar curve which we had plotted over here okay or which we had assumed over here okay we are almost getting a similar kind of curve if you could see very clearly 